Do you run your own freelance business? Or maybe you're thinking about picking up some business on the side. Well, then you need FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the quickest and easiest way to get invoices out to your clients. It's easy to use. It works anywhere, available from any device, uh, on the desktop, iPhone, iPad, Android, and all of your data is backed up and secure. And it makes it really easy to get organized and get paid. You'll be tracking time, logging expenses, and invoicing your clients in no time. You can also save time billing, freeing up several days per month to focus on the work that you love, and you get paid faster. FreshBooks customers are paid on average five days faster because there's a link on the invoice that says pay me now. And it's a great way to grow your business. Plus, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day trial. That's right, 30-day trial if you try them out. So go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Once again, for a 30-day trial, go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Hey, everybody, and welcome to our first recorded episode of the Views on View podcast. This week on our panel, we have uh, Cher Stewart. Hi. Eric Hanchett. Hey, hey, hey. Joe Eames. Hey, everybody. Uh, John Papa is going to be joining us in the future as a panelist. I'm Charles Maxwood from devchat.tv. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're going to kind of kick this uh, show off. Now, just to clarify, if, if we sound a little clairvoyant um, in the next episode, it's because we recorded this one first and the episode with Evan second. So anyway, um, we're looking forward to that, but we don't actually know what he's going to tell us. So yeah, just just keep that in mind. Anyway, my mind is blown, Chuck. I know, time shift, right? Uh huh. <laughs> so yeah, so um, when I start these shows, what I tend to like to do is first of all just give people the chance to uh, introduce themselves. So, uh, Cher, why don't we start with you? Do you want to introduce yourself? Let people know who you are and why you're world famous. Sure. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, yeah. So my name is Cher. I am a tech lead at Starbucks in the technology department. Um, I previously worked at Blizzard Entertainment and before that was at USA Today, um, kind of paving the way towards uh, progressive web apps. Awesome. Holy cow, you've worked at some crazy high profile companies. That's, That's awesome. how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Nice. Eric, how about you? Hey, yeah, uh, I'm, my name is Eric Hanchett. I'm a software developer from Reno, Nevada, and I am also an author of the Vue.js in action book, which is in early access, hopefully be out later um, in a couple months. Um, I'm also a fellow podcaster with Chuck and in, in, uh, in some other podcasts. And uh, I also do some YouTube. So definitely check me out. I'm um, if you search anywhere for error hand chat, you'll find me um, on YouTube. So I do uh, teach, I teach people programming. Nice. Now, if you listen to the JavaScript Jabber or Adventures in Angular podcasts, you'll know Joe. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself for people who don't know you? Yeah, uh, I'm Joe Eames. Uh, I've been doing a lot of JavaScript for the last uh, 10-ish years, and I have done quite a few podcasts now with Chuck. I author courses for on a plural site. On most of the courses I've authored have been on either generic JavaScript topics or on Angular. And I organize a lot of conferences, one of which is the big uh, Angular conference, ng-conf. But I am organizing a brand new conference called the Framework Summit, which is about all front-end frameworks, including Vue. So um, that's me. Awesome. And I'm Charles Max Wood. Um, I've been podcasting, man, for what, like nine years? Um, you know, we do Ruby Rogues and JavaScript Jabber and Adventures in Angular. We just started a React podcast. If you're interested in that, go check it out as well. Um, in fact, we <laughs> recorded the first episode of that yesterday. So uh, these are kind of coming out simultaneously. But uh, I had a lot of requests for Vue, React, and of all things, Elixir. So uh, I started these two because I knew people and could find panelists, and I'm still working on the Elixir show. So um, if any of those strike your fancy, go check those out. Um, and uh, yeah, all in all, I'm, I'm really interested in this stuff, but uh, due to the number of shows that I'm involved in and the amount of time it takes to produce the podcasts, I'm probably not going to be the most expert voice on the show, 
but I kind of make all the trains run on time. So, um, and, and, and I like talking to people about tech. So, uh, th this is what I do uh, kind of on a different note than everybody else. Um, so I, I'm curious with everybody here, um, how did you get into Vue? Cher, how did you find Vue? How did you get started with it? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of antisocial and I don't just mean that in the like, I don't like talking to people kind of way because obviously I'm here, but in that I tend to do what's not popular. Um, <laughs> it's just like a, a personality quirk I have, I guess. So I was at Blizzard and um, our we were shifting our tech stack into Node and I really wanted to build this really kick-ass scheduling system that worked with our um, videos for our BlizzCon show. And I really wanted to do it in a, you know, a P mini PWA inside of um, the bones of our structure, which was, you know, Jade, because we were moving from Java um, to Node and we needed all that stuff to work together. And uh, basically, I, I picked Vue because I liked that it had the same uh, philosophies that uh, React did without actually being React. <laughs> and so I got, I got into it pretty early on. And then, I mean, it's really only gotten better. And I'm so glad that um, I found it and I fell in love with it. And I got to use it um, so early on in such a cool project. Awesome. How about you, Eric? How did you get into Vue? So oh, I kind of, I, I was definitely more, and I still am, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Ember.js fan. I've done some projects in Ember.js, just uh, freelancing a little bit and also for fun. And I was writing some tutorials and videos, because um, I mentioned before I do uh, YouTube videos and tutorials. And uh, one day I, I, I looked at a couple of other channels and everybody was talking about Vue.js. And you know, I kind of be, kind of might be an interesting technology to learn. So I, I spent... I spent a few hours and I created pretty in-depth like beginner tutorial on Vue.js where I went over all the basics and I instantly coming from Ember, which some people say might have a little bit higher learning curve. I was instantly in love with uh, Vue.js and how easy it was to just get ramped up and, and how it was easy just to get learning. I mean, I mean, they call it the progressive framework for a reason because you can progressively put it into your projects or you can certainly start all, all the way in it. But, uh, yeah, I, I just started playing around with it and uh, doing videos and tutorials, and I really started enjoying and liking it. And, and then uh, I liked it so much, I decided to write about it. Nice. How about you, Joe? What's your background with Vue? So um, I've been doing tons and tons of Angular for a very long time, and um, I just started hearing a lot of stuff about Vue. And one of the things I never want to do is to get myself out of date or to not be aware of other things. So I, I spent some time playing around with React uh, a couple of years ago just to make myself educated on it and decided I was going to do the same thing with Vue. So I've just been playing around with it, toy projects, that sort of thing. I haven't put anything in production, uh, just working with tutorials and uh, uh, that aspect and getting myself familiar enough that I uh, can at least have an opinion uh, as an, a nice unfounded opinion uh, uh, ignorant opinion, those are the best kinds. Nice. And <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny because I'm totally going to play the noob card here as far as um, Vue goes. I mean, I've done a bunch with Angular. Um, I've actually been going out of my way to learn React, um, mainly because I've, I've had a bit more um, requests for the React show as opposed to the Vue show. And I want to learn them both, at least to, you know, be able to have conversations about them and things like that. But um, I kind of have to pick and choose. So I'm probably going to be learning Vue as we talk about various aspects of it for this show. Um, of course, that's kind of how I learned Angular as well. So um, it should be fun. It should be interesting to see what what we wind up learning here. But yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so I, I kind of have this uh, academic interest as well as, um, you know, it's it's just one of the technologies that we cover here at DevChat. So um, anyway... So this show, I, I like starting off the podcast uh, within the first few episodes, doing an episode where we talk about how to learn the, the technology. So what recommendations do you all have as far as uh, how to go about learning Vue? Are there things that you need to learn first? Are there good resources for that? W what do you all think? 
So the view website itself actually has a, a really great tutorial. And, um, it's one of the things that they work really, really hard to keep it up to date. Um, so sometimes when a language evolves, um, the documentation can fall a little behind, especially when, you know, they don't have gigantic, um, big teams like Facebook behind it. Um, but they actually do a really great job of, um, keeping it up to date. And it really does walk you through from like, basics, you know, getting, getting a little thing, a little PWA started versus like, you know, going into server side rendering and, um, all of those more complex processes. Um, Udemy also has a course on it that, um, I took, even though I already know Vue, um, just cause I was curious about, about it. And it's really, really good as well. That's Maximilian's course, isn't it? Yeah. I think there's more than one. Um, this one is specifically for you two. I'm not sure about the the other ones. Yeah, I know Maximilian's course. I, I I definitely when I was looking over some resources and looking at the official documentations, like Shara said, is is really good and amazing to start off with. But Maximilian's, which I think you interviewed Chuck too. Yeah, he he uh, he has pretty good Angular courses and he has a pretty good View course too. And definitely, you know, there's a lot of really good free resources. Um, just there's, uh, I would say, you know, books, there's definitely some good books out there. There's, but yeah, at first, I think if you're just kind of curious, just go to the, the official guides of UJS.org and just go to an installation. You'll obviously need NPM node to, to get installed. I mean, you don't even actually need node or NPM. You can just use it as a script link at the top of connect to their CDN just to get it. You can play around with it pretty quickly to get started. Now, if you obviously want to use Vue CLI, you'll need to use Node and NPM. But yeah, I, I second some of those those cheap Udemy courses. And of course, YouTube, I have a ton of free resources too. And Anthony Gore, he runs a, a blog that uh, that I'll, I think it's called Vue. I'll have to find the link here. But yeah, he has a blog on Vue.js, which is really good too. It's super unfortunate that this will be going up not today. Because right now, the uh, Maximilian's course, which it was Maximilian's course, um, is only $11.99. Nice. You know, they should probably check because those sales tend to run for a long time. It says there's 11 hours left. I've never seen it this low. Really? Yeah. When I bought it, I actually bought that course and I think I paid $10 for it. What? Yeah. I did not pay $10 for it. What did you pay? pay? (laughs) I paid one hundred and eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Really? <laughs> all right, folks. Let me save you all a little bit of hassle and money. What I've done is uh, I tend to put my e- so Udemy. I hate giving my email address to people, but Udemy it's worth it. You give them your email address, you let them know you're interested in web development, and periodically they'll send you these sales. And yeah, you get a hundred and fifty dollar course for like ten bucks. And so I, I, if you really want to learn it now, go pay whatever they're asking for it. But my experience is is that every month or so they tend to put these courses up for yeah, dirt cheap. I see Udemy's courses like sales on there all the time. Ten, twenty dollars for most anything I've looked for. <laughs> I feel so gypped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I were an author, it would yeah, drive me nuts. But uh, that's funny. Yeah, that, definitely. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big sponsor of Udemy. I've talked to them before. I, I um, they're affiliate of mine on my channel i mean i promote them and yeah they have these courses every now and then and if you can get on their course to buy these buy buy stuff for cheap it, it's a good deal uh, by the way earlier i mentioned anthony's blog viewjsdevelopers.com is another really good resource um the news you were talking about a newsletter right did you mention a newsletter or were you just talking about mention. the blog uh, maybe uh about he has blog. a blog he has a newsletter too there's a view newsletter that he puts out so is the newsletter the Vue.js feed? Is that because I, I subscribe to that one? Yeah, I'm so there's sure. there's a Vue.js uh, no. news by Review. That's R E V U E, um, and I think they anyway. That that's the one that I think I think Greg Pollock's behind that one. Him and his team. Um, and, that's, and then that's news news, not like here's here's another here how to do something with Vue. Hmm. A new resource, um, which is Jen Looper and Sarah Drasner's new project, is Vue Vixens. 
And there's like mentoring and um, workshops and um, some other things as well. Is that like uh, in <clears throat> Angular, we have ng girls in Ruby, we have Rails Bridge. Is it, is it kind of like that where they do workshops and stuff out in the community and put out yep. curriculum and resources and things like that? Yep. Very and they're nice. just getting going. So um, sometimes it's easier to get like really fast help and get, get it in your city if you're one of the people that like asks first. So definitely want to plug them on that. Yep, absolutely. We should talk to Sarah to get her on this podcast. We should. I have about six things that I want to get Sarah on the show for, so we might have to space them out. Um, <laughs> I do have to say that, um, you know, what we talk about, like, uh, uh, View Vixen sounds like it's just for women, and that's usually the primary focus, but I've never seen any of these workshops turn somebody away. So if you are interested, you know, show up. And then if you are doing View and you want to help out as a mentor, that's always a cool experience too. So this is awesome. So their thing is super cool, although it's really early. Like I, I feel bad giving out this URL because all the links like on their website just go to coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend following them on Twitter and then you'll be able to get in on the ground running and see what they're right. doing. At this point, they're they're like doing conferences and stuff like that. So very nice. Well, they're gonna do a conference. Well. They're they're presenting. They're going at to conferences. Yeah. Oh, okay. That that's another thing that I'm wondering about. So I know that there was like a Vue.js Amsterdam conference. Are there other conferences out there about Vue? There's a U.S. Vue conference, and mm -hmm. uh, there's several European conference Vue conferences. And then there's one Vue yeah, Conf U.S., which was just attached to another conference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, like, I know that. Uh, yeah, I know that the New Orleans, it's in New Orleans in March 26th to 28th is the, the ViewConf for U.S. And they're going to have, I think Evan Yu is going to be there, Sarah, we just meant Sarah Drasner is going to be there. Um, so is, is a few other people, Chris Fritz. So that, that that's going to be a cool conference too. I don't know, it looks like it's brand new. So, you know, your knowledge might vary of how many people will show up and mm -hmm. and how interactive. Maybe, maybe right, is there another conference right before that it hooks into? Joe? Maybe maybe not this one. I think maybe last year there was, oh. but I, I might be wrong. I might be I might be mistaken about that. Maybe uh, I was confusing with something else. Yeah, I do like the conferences though for the content that you get on YouTube or YouTube and things like that. Um, if you're trying to get like a half hour demo of a certain thing or an introduction to a certain idea, a lot of times those are really great. And if they come from a conference that's focused on view, then they're going to give you the spin on that that really uh, applies to what you're doing. So, um, you know, that's just, that's just great stuff. So I'm, I'm always curious to see that, uh, you know, what's coming out on those kinds of things. Um, any other conferences, no, I, Joe, that I, you want to mention that might have something to do with Vue? Well, I did mention Framework Summit already, right, when I was talking about yeah. uh, me. So there's the Framework Summit coming up October 2nd or 3rd. Uh, up in Park City, Utah, beautiful Park City, Utah, by the way, up in the mountains in Utah, and uh, I think the Swiss Alps, but with cowboys. So, <laughs> <laughs> think of the, it's like Wyoming meets the Swiss Alps. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be really exciting, and that's, it's a two-day conference. View, uh, we got Chris Fritz coming to talk, be the official representation for Vue uh, there, giving uh, I talk about Vue, and then we'll have lots more content about Vue as well. Awesome. Very excited for that. Yeah, check it out. View, just View Summit. You can just Google View Summit, but ViewSummit.com. And you can go in and um, register to be notified when the CFP happens or just get notified as uh, things happen as well. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So are there other so good You haven't done a CFP yet? Oh. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, sorry, the the CFP is not open yet. It'll open up like May, I think May first, and then it'll probably be open into well into June. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna wait wait around a little bit to open it up till we're closer to October. Awesome. Well, I for one, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Um, we had a whole show about that uh, uh, conference on another podcast, so I don't know, maybe. 
we'll end up having a show about it on on here one one week but just it's a conference about all front end frameworks so uh be about learning more than one thing rather than just focusing on just one thing that you're doing but actually learning about them all and seeing how the different frameworks solve different problems and uh I'll be, I'll, I'm really excited about that and building a community across frameworks rather than trying to people trying to just silo within a single framework because they believe that it's the one and true and only thing that could ever possibly be until three years from now when they choose another one and true and only thing that'll, that'll <laughs> be their love forever and ever and ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were asking if there were any other tutorials. Um, there was actually one. So I started out with um, Vue.js 1, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't really update um, any of my personal stuff while I was working um, in other technologies um, up until I started working in Vue 2 professionally um, for con some contract work. And I use the Scotch IO build a to do app uh, with view to uh, tutorial. And it was really, really good um, for getting me as somebody who like was in this one space, you know, trying to go from like, okay, I understand like these principles um, to how do I build a thing with these changes? Yeah, I've used the Scotch tutorials. Those are pretty good. I definitely agree with you there. Um, I've used them quite a while. If you search on YouTube, I mean, we mentioned Maximilian. He has some free tutorials on YouTube too. Um, also, uh, Travesy Media, uh, Brad Travesy, he kind of spelled like Traversy. He has some really good tutorials too on, uh, on uh, a bunch of different topics. But yes, yeah, Scotch is definitely a great one. And also, if you look up uh, Program with Eric, you can see some tutorials as well cool um okay. there's also i know i i saw a couple on lara casts as well when i was making switch so i imagine um there are some really good ones on there too so many resources what about books yeah it's funny. eric do you know of a good book on uh, Vue.js? might still be in process progress <laughs> Yep, yep. It's uh, Vue.js in action. It's by Manning, uh, published by Manning. So yeah, it's I kind of took everything I was learning from the official guides, all the tutorials out there, um, my own experiences, and and uh, wrote it wrote into one single book. And its first nine chapters are out. The last three chapters I've written. I'm just going through them with a a fine to. Uh, just making sure that they, they, they work really well, going over all the examples again. And hopefully it'll be completely done here in, in a month or two after I, I do that. And I'm also getting a lot of good feedback on the forums and from people that have just gone through it. So I'm kind of adding and deleting and subtracting a few things to make it pretty good. So I'm happy about that. There is a couple of other books. Um, yeah, I know there's a bunch from Pact, the Pact um, uh label <laughs> already and then the uh the uh o'reilly view js um by callum mccray is going to be released um i think at the end of march cool oh so even more competition coming out i know yeah definitely the pack publishing and i think there's a few self-published the majesty of view js 2 has been pretty popular for a while i think evan you even was a part of that um so, yeah, Pact has a lot of books on that. It's a good point. Sure. Well, and, and one of the things, you, you mentioned competition, but one thing that I find is that um, sometimes I have to go through a book or two before I find one that has an approach that actually works for me. So, you know, just take that with a grain of salt. You know, you may find one that is the one that you want, or you may have to try a couple before you get to the one that you want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I've been that. very supportive of that. Yep. Go ahead, Joe. Just saying, I totally agree with that. Uh, there's plenty of options. I mean, me, when I learn stuff, I love getting the same content twice, just two different perspectives from two different people and consuming them both. Even if both of them work for me, I still like that opportunity. So one of the things that I'm curious about is, um, are most people writing Vue.js with TypeScript or ES6 or ES5? Is there kind of a blessed way to do it, or is it just however you want? 
I mean, Vue, one of the really great things about Vue is that it's really not opinionated really at all. You know, like going back to that, like it's really a, a pro progressive <laughs> application framework. Um, I think in my experience, most people that I've worked with or um, read tutorials from and seen their work are writing an ES6, you no know, semicolon. Um, but I think it doesn't, it doesn't matter, like whatever you're comfortable with, it'll work and you will find resources um, that are written in a style that, that you prefer. I'm not sure about TypeScript though. Somebody else might have to comment on that. And I see yeah, a lot of that. people talking about doing, a doing it with TypeScript. So I think it's pretty popular. Yeah, it definitely there's some, well, right now, if you use the latest version of UCLI, um, it doesn't have TypeScript support built in. However, the new version, um, UCLI 3.0, that's an alpha, has TypeScript built in. So that seems to be the direction they're going. Yeah. But you can certainly take your existing project and add it. Yeah, the reason that I ask is because um, Angular has kind of fully embraced TypeScript. React has kind of fully embraced ES6. And so it's just interesting to see, okay, where, where do we come down with Vue? Um, because with the other two, you almost well, have to know those versions of JavaScript in order to write your your apps. Uh, there's also a uh, reason ML is getting a little popular in the React community as an alternative yep. language. Uh, you know, when you look at Angular, you absolutely must do TypeScript. Yes, it's theoretically possible to do uh, Angular without TypeScript in the way that it's theoretically possible to drive on the freeway without brakes, but <laughs> <laughs> no sane person would ever do that. So it uh, just wouldn't be worth the the volume of effort to yeah. get it to work. Right, exactly. So, uh, but Vue, uh, React, they have like those just the low opinions, which makes it a ton easier to say, I want to do ES5, I want to do ES6, I want to do TypeScript. Um, I haven't heard if uh, it's compatible with ReasonML or not, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of options there, which is which is great. So I'm sure we're going to see that some people are doing it, some people are not. Uh, hopefully, we don't hear that CoffeeScript becomes a super, super, super popular thing with you, but maybe that will be too. I think CoffeeScript is dead. <laughs> it's it's going to resurrect. View is going to resurrect is, it. Yeah. Honestly, I wish that like one of the good. <laughs> I shouldn't see so that's not nice. Um, one of the uh, languages that people prefer over CoffeeScript um, was named CoffeeScript so that I could write in it and it would be like really on brand. Like, I work at Starbucks, I write in CoffeeScript, but like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because you work at Starbucks. It took me a minute. Sorry, I'm a little bit slow. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I don't know if you know, but Starbucks sells coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So the other the other thing that I'm wondering about, because, um, you know, we do the shows on Angular and React, and it seems like there are kind of different ends of this. So Angular very much has kind of the Angular way of doing things. And with React, it's really much more about the ecosystem, right? So you go pull in Redux or MobX to do your state management, and you go pull in, you know, this utility and that library and this other thing in order to kind of build up what you want. And with Angular, it's much less that way. You know, you, you kind of start out with Angular and then, you know, you may pull in NGRX or something like that, but it's still all done the Angular way. Is Vue more about the ecosystem or is it more about the Vue.js way of building apps? Yeah, I think it's more about just the way you want to build your app. So, yeah, you have all these modules, you have Vue Router, you have Vuex, which is kind of like the state management, like your Redux and other frameworks. But you can certainly um, kind of progressively added into an existing app or you can start your app off and just use kind of the view layer the view view layer so to speak um, which you know you could just use it that way so I, I think you can you have a lot of opportunity of kind of how you want to shape your applications with view mm -hmm. yeah and i think that some of the apps that i've built like with react are marginally faster than the apps that i've built with view but it's also been a lot and this is like in, with, in terms of mentoring for other people to come in and understand what's going on in my app and it makes sense to them. Whereas with React, even in, you know, working in an organization that um, works in a React ecosystem, onboarding people is, is more difficult. Um, partly, I think, because of the, you know, the slight language differences and just 
it's just a lot more opinionated. And sometimes that can be more difficult to get people in and out of. Right. Yeah, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of value to having the unopinionated options available. So like if you were to put a spectrum together, I think that you'd probably find that Ember is, lies on the very end of most opinionated, then Angular slightly this side of it within a kissing distance, certainly uh, the two of them. And then you move back down into React and Vue where it's, hey, we provide little, very little, pick, pick everything else. And um, that's, it's, a, it's an interesting place to be. But Vue, as, uh, as you were saying, Cher, also hits this really awesome sweet spot that AngularJS, the first version of Angular, also hit, which is you can slap a script tag in, do a few things and see some magic happen. And for people that are first starting out in either programming or just starting out in front end or the first time they're getting into a new uh, framework, right? That yeah. learning curve is so much smoother right from the start, start than it is in a lot of other options. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it is objectively smoother than anything else by any means, but it definitely is optimized for a very smooth. You can do a little bit and learn a little bit. You don't have to do a whole lot before you first learn a little bit, and then the learning picks up. You can do a tiny bit, and all of a sudden you've learned you know, just a little bit and something effective, something you can utilize. And a lot of times that's like the barrier of entry, right? Like that's yeah. one of the reasons why, like I know I'm self-taught. I taught myself to code when I was um, a kid and going from just HTML and CSS to, you know, I, I, um, I learned JavaScript from reverse engineering sites that I built in Macromedia Dreamweaver and JavaScript, it's like, it's, it just works, right? Like you can write the hor most horrible code, but the second like it does something and it solves the problem you're trying to solve, you feel like, oh, wow, like I can do this. And that like gives you the courage to A, do more and B, like do it better. It's, the, it's that barrier of entry. And I feel like Vue does that so well that, you know, obviously you should probably know some JavaScript already, um, but it's more of like a stepping stone, whereas it feels like a mountain to climb over to get like the, the click of React. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's, that's a really big deal. It's like the first page or two of a book, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people will turn away if the first page or two doesn't get you hooked and get you interested in the, a lot of the great books. They have that hook right in the first page or two. Well, and there's yeah, coming from, said, or the way that people learn JavaScript a lot of times by firing up the browser, opening the dev tools, and then just typing stuff into the console. Um, it seems like Vue is approachable that way, where, yeah, some of these others, React and Angular and things like that, I mean, there's, you know, there's a big build process behind it before you actually can, can fiddle with some of that stuff. Or you can go to, like, JS Complete or something and, and do React over there. Go ahead, Eric. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just commenting on what Joe was saying that, about uh, about the kind of how opinionated frameworks are coming from Ember.js, and now I'm doing a lot more Angular 5. I could see how, I mean, it's a whole different paradigm from working in those frameworks and then moving to something like Vue, where you're, you're you know, it's not, it's very less opinionated. Right. And I love Angular. Don't get me wrong. I love Angular, and I believe it has its place, but it's a highly opinionated. Vue is definitely very not. So it fits a different niche, but a great niche. I never got into... I mean, I had to work in Angular because, like, you know, we all did. But um, I, I went from... I started out in Ruby as far as back-end programming goes. So then, you know, being in that that group, then I went to... Python and then to uh, Ember, <laughs> you know, that's like the, the path of like Ruby and you, you know, Python's optional, but Ruby and Ember are kind of like, you know, neighbors, <laughs> I guess. And so I never, <laughs> I never really liked Angular because it, it didn't feel natural to me. Um, but I get why large organizations use it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ember was an outgrowth of a lot of the work that, uh, Yehuda did on Rails. Uh, he he right. did a lot of work converting Rails 2 to Rails 3 and merging a lot of the ideas uh, within Merb. Okay, so I'm an old Rails person. But uh, anyway, um, so so then what he did is he brought a lot of those ideas to Ember. And so if you're looking for an opinionated framework that tells you how to do something 
and you just do it the ember way or the rails way in a lot of ways that's really nice because i don't have to figure out you know okay what tools do i have to pull in what libraries do i have to pull in you know how do i bend this to my will there's typically a way to do it you know mm -hmm. there there may be more than one right way to do it but there's typically a way that you, you know that people are going to begin to approach it and so that's that's really nice in a lot of circumstances but sometimes you just want something really simple that kind of gets out of your way um you know kind of feels like it has a natural flow to it one way or the other and and that's it and so that's the thing that I find very gratifying about the front end uh, system is that, you know, if, if I feel like a Vue.js sort of approach, it's there for me. And if I feel like something else, then, you know, Angular's there for me. And if, if I feel like I want something that's more along the lines of what React offers, you know, and, and I want to go and, and build my own lightsaber, so to speak, because um, I think React with its ecosystem sometimes gets a little bit complicated. But if I want to go figure that stuff out, I can. And then there are all kinds of things in between, too, where people say, here's a recommended stack for Vue. Here's a recommended stack for React. And, and you can start to pull that stuff together depending on what you need. And we have all of these myriad options that we can go to to, to build our applications. Totally. And um, something that you just made me think of is the reason why I like to use Vue in like startup style projects or anything that I'm working on like personally is that it's so good for exploring because it really is like little like Legos. Whereas with React, I feel like I need to know where I'm going. Whereas with Vue, I feel like I can literally like, you know, build the tracks of the train for the train as I'm driving it. You know, I don't need a, a clear direction or a clear path. I can literally just explore and it'll work. That's very cool. It's a very cool way to put it. Any other recommendations before we uh, get to picks? Places people can go to get help or learn? We definitely hit everything that I knew about. Yeah. I, I think we're, we're still in the, um, that baby stage where uh, the best place to get help is probably the Vue.js forums, mm -hmm. uh, other than the resources that, um, that we talked about. But if, you know, if you're having trouble and you want one-on-one -on -one help, um, somebody will help you in the Vue.js forum. So that's probably we the should, We should definitely mention local meetups, right? Uh, you oh. may have a local meetup that is about Vue. So definitely check there. Head over to meetup.com and see if there's anything about Vue locally. Yep. I never think about that stuff because I'm antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody needs to pick people for share. All right. Um, let's go ahead and do some picks. Eric, do you want to start us off with picks? Uh, yeah. So I guess this picks can be anything that anything. kind of interesting websites. Yep. Anything. You no, know, I like, you know, recently I've been looking at uh, keybase.io which is a free security app for mobile phones and computers. Um, so it's like a it's like an open source powered public key cryptography where you can do messaging, like um, very secure messaging, things like that. So uh, I've been kind of playing around with that. It's it's pretty neat. Uh, it's, you know, it's for Mac OS, Windows, Linux, Android, and just seeing you know how I can do more secure encryption and messaging. And it does a lot of bunch of other things too. Awesome. Joe, do you have some picks for us? I do. I do have some picks. I'll give you a, uh, a couple of picks. Uh, I watched, I've been watching a TV show lately that I found very, very interesting. It's called Counterpart. It's on Stars. So I actually had to up my Hulu subscription to include Stars just because I'm a big fan of J.K. Simmons, who's the oh. main character or main actor in it. Uh, it, it unfortunately... It's I'm so used to Netflix now that when, you know, a series comes out, I could just binge watch, binge watch the whole thing. And it's actually being released, you know, one episode a week. So as of right now, there's only like four or five episodes out. But it's been a great, very interesting show. Maybe uh, wait until the end of the season and then binge watch it or something. That way you can only pay for one month of uh, stars and get get the whole thing. Uh, but that's been a great show. Just a little bit of warning. Um, there has been a tiny bit of uh, adult nudity, so if you find that, uh, and some, and there's a fair amount of swearing, so it is a more adult show. Uh, so counterpart, and then my other pick is going to be a board game. I love to pick board games because I'm a huge board game fan. Played this, played this awesome dice game called Sagrada, S-A-G-R-A-D-A. 
highly recommend it. Fantastic game, super fun to play. Uh, somewhat strategic, but also kind of fun because you're building a stained glass window with these dice and um, really appeals to a wide audience. My wife really likes it, and I really like it. We had a fun time playing it. And those are my picks. Nice. Cher, do you have some picks for us? Yeah, I have some picks for you. So my first one is a little bit obscure um, in the sense that it's not a specific thing. Um, but so a little back history, a year ago, my daughter wanted a turtle for her birthday and I stupidly bought one (laughs) (laughs) and, uh, I really wanted to scape the turtles tank like a river and the turtle ate every plant I put in there. It really tore it up. It was awful. Um, but this led me to YouTube and looking for, aquascaping a turtle tank which led me to aquascaping fish tanks and that's kind of my new hobby that i'm into right now and watching um some of the aquascaping videos that are just set to music that don't have talking or maybe they have like a soothing voice that's like over uh, over the top of the the video portion of it with some soft music is so relaxing and i fall asleep watching aquarium videos basically (laughs) night is this uh, is this like what what people people watching? Oh, who's that painter with from the seventies? Bob Ross. Here? Bob Ross. This is like the the new Bob Ross, the Bob it's, Ross of the yeah the yes. Millennium. And it's it's so interesting because of course, it, being a programmer, you know, at heart, the first thing I did was like become very disenchanted with the lighting. Um, applications available for controlling, you know, the different daytime, <laughs> simulate daytimes of lights and figuring uh-huh. out like, okay, I'm going to have to build an app for this and it's going to do this, 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 but then also actually the hardware, not finding it aesthetically pleasing and figuring out like what tools exist that I can like take apart and put together to make something that I like to look at that still works as well as the things that I need. <laughs> Alexa enable the uh, app you built. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm actually a Google home system and I am like obsessed with like smart things. Now I have like smart, everything like light bulbs, uh, switches, my fans, the thermostat. Like I can, I can basically tell my Google to do like open my garage. Like I can do so many things. I just like sit here and I never have to move. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. All right, well, uh, I'm going to jump in here with a few picks of my own. Um, so uh, one of the things that I, I tend to like to do when we uh, talk about these shows is I do have a set of equipment that uh, I record the shows on. So uh, I'm going to pick my microphone, which is the RE20. 20? 20? RE20. It's the RE20, yep. So uh, anyway, it's it's a super nice mic. It's not a cheap mic. So um, if you want some uh, great sound... Uh, then I highly, highly recommend it. If you're just getting into podcasting, then I'm going to recommend the ATR2100. Um, it'll do uh, both XLR, which is the three-prong plug that nobody can remember what it's called, um, and it'll also do USB. So you can hook it up either way, um, and I, I really, really like it. And it, it usually runs for about 60 or $70 on Amazon, which is much more affordable for people. And if you're just starting to get into podcasting or something, um, it sounds great and it's not super expensive. It won't break your budget. So, uh, definitely like that. Um, and then I also have a Zenix 802, um, mixer that a lot of this goes into. Um, and then I, I have a hardware recorder by, uh, Roland. It's the Roland R-09. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of the core of what I used to record the shows and people ask. So anyway, um, putting that all together and uh recording shows that way um and then i know that this is a view show but my last pick is going to be react dev summit that's coming up at the end of march so if you're into react uh you can watch the talks for free live and then if you get a paid ticket then you get access to the recordings for the first six months or so after the the uh, conference so anyway if you're interested in that go to reactdevsummit.com uh we'll probably have some talks that you're interested in about like webpack and things like that Um, but yeah, not, not everything is going to be, you know, necessarily applicable to view developers, but if you're exploring frameworks then I think it'll be an interesting place to go. So yeah. And then 
finally, my last pick is going to be the Framework Summit. It just looks like something really exciting and awesome. So uh, shout out to Joe and all of the other folks working on that. Um, I'm excited to attend it. And uh, as Joe said, Park City is gorgeous. And mm -hmm. it's going to be in October. So you're going to be there right when the leaves are starting to change, which is all just going to be incredible. So anyway, um, that that's all I got. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, real quick before we do that, though, if people want to follow you guys on Twitter or, you know, other places, you know, wh where do they see what you're uh, thinking about or talking about these days? I am at Code Hitchhiker on Instagram and Twitter. That's awesome. Joe? I am at Joseph Eames, J-O-S-C-P-H-E-A-M-E-S on Twitter. All right. I'm at CMAXW on Twitter. That's C-M-A-X-W. Um, I wanted something short, so that's what I went up with. All right. Well, we will go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, ne next week, we're talking to Evan Yu, but uh, you, listener, probably have already heard that interview. So um, if you haven't, go back and listen to episode one, and uh, we'll catch you all next week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.